What up, guys? This is another episode of Uncle Bo TV. I am Cuzzo Smith, and uh, today I got my brother from a you know from a far distance, but he always been supporting <laughs> me. Uh, my brother Cliff Davis. What's happening, man? Hey, I'm good, man. Everything's good. Everything's gravy. Living life, taking it one day at a time. For sure, bro. That's all we can do. You know. Uh, but yeah, man, like we just talk about mental health on this podcast, you know, we feel yeah. free to talk about what's going on in the world and how we feel about it. You feel what I'm saying? So yeah. first things first, what what was coming up like as far as like, you know, just is coming up? Um, I guess, I guess as a child, I mean, I was kind of the, I guess the, the, um, the, the one that kind of just stayed to himself. I ain't really... You know, like everybody knew me, but everybody knew me as the, you know, the quiet one. Didn't really say too much. Just, you know, was the one that just, you know, kind of stuck around the people that really didn't have friends or had people to, to play with or, you know, didn't have the one to talk to or whatever. It was always a, a mental thing for me to, you know, just hang around those that, you know, just felt alone or just felt like they were just by themselves, I guess, okay. in the crowd or whatever. So would you say like it was like more antisocial, or was it more like a, a distant kind of like thing? It was more of a distant, and I think it was more of a distant because, um, you know there there are people you know even today there are there are kids out there who just feel like nobody cares about them. They feel like um, they are by themselves that. You know, there's nobody in the world like them or another kid like them that share the same interests or the same same uh, qualities. You know, mm -hmm. for an example, you know, for a kid that like comic books or whatever the case may be, you know, they may feel like, oh, well, you know, nobody care about the, you know, the comic books I read or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. You know, but I feel that I've always felt like there's always somebody out there for somebody else. You know, there's always somebody out there for somebody, so. You know, you're never in this world by yourself. There's a billion people in the world, but there's always somebody for you. You know, yeah. whether friend, whatever it is, you know, right. there's always somebody out there for you. Okay. Okay. So pretty much you'll say you're you're more the advocate for that person who feel like they don't necessarily share the same uh aspects or desires as everybody else, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. like that's the that's the thing, because it's kinda crazy how it's like how anime has become everyone's thing now how it's yes. just like you know when we were younger uh or, or in school like people would just be like bro that's weird or you're a weirdo and then just to find out when you're an adult everybody likes it so yeah, yeah you know it's kind of weird yeah and it's and and it's crazy because even even with the adults it's almost like it, it it's almost like it it gives them a a a reminder of their childhood, but it also allows them to kind of connect with, you know, those who are younger that is into anime as well, mm -hmm. you know, so, you know, like I have, like I have, I have uh, friends and I had, I have a brother, you know, who, you know, growing up, you know, he liked to, you know, draw and was in the anime and just different things as well. So, you know, I think it, I think it's, uh, I think it's, it's some type of connection somewhere you know, within that, that area, that arena, so. Oh, okay, awesome, awesome. And I love the fact that anime has helped, uh, you know, uh, a lot of different cultures connect in a way, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Just like, uh, 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 it, it's kind of... Oh, that dog on Wi-Fi, man. <laughs> yeah, but I think it was on my end, because I think my phone, something up with my phone, but uh, yeah, we're back on. And uh, I think we were just talking about, you know, uh, how many black people are getting into anime and everything like that. And I think that's a, a perfect subject to really like focus on at the moment, because uh, at first, like you said, it, it it's a thing where we grow up, you know what I'm saying? We kind of distant because, you know, we're on to this, uh, this thing and anime was most of the thing that, that, you know, kept us a little bit on the, on a good spectrum. You feel what I'm saying? So yeah, when I when I say that, it was just like seeing how anime became everybody's go to now. Where it was yeah. just like, yo, at first I thought this was just weird. I thought it was just something that I liked on my own. And to see, you know, so many black people love it to the point where now we we're having more creators in the yeah. anime world. You know what I'm saying? Dang, so what so like like what do you think about that? 
Um, I think it kind of gives them, I, I think it kind of gives everybody an opportunity to uh, really just express themselves um, and really, really be creative. Um, you know, when I first um, looked at the, I guess, the idea of anime, I, you know, I didn't really, really know, know what it was. Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody knew about, you know, Naruto and all these other, you know, different uh, cartoons and stuff, but I think it kind of gives you an op uh, uh, opportunity to really connect with other countries as well, you know, and, you know, how they are in, 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 in different countries and so forth and so on. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because it's, it's, it's bigger than just, you know, us like an anime. You feel what I'm saying? Uh, anime has been around for, like, decades. You feel what I'm saying? But oh, wow. To, like you said, you know, for, for countries and stuff to, you know, uh, relate in a way where it's just like, okay, um, it's been a long time where it's just like, you know, uh, the Asian people not always like black people. Like, let's keep it mm -hmm. a buck. They, they didn't always like black people. But the fact that this thing, this, this anime thing caused us to interact to, you know, be like, yo, this this is crazy how we love something that is just cartoons. You know feel what I'm yeah. saying? But we... we we connect more than that. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah, that, yeah. that's sort of and, that it's, and I, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie. It's, it's something I'm still kind of learning and getting the idea of. I mean, because like I said, you know, that what that wasn't a, a, a big, I guess, a big thing that I was used to growing up. But mm -hmm. you know, as as you said, it's something that's kind of been around for decades. So you know, it's something I. <laughs> I'm still getting introduced to, or, you know, so I think, I think more of the younger um, people know more about it than I do. And so they're yeah. still, you know, teaching me and, and, you know, showing me things about anime that I have no clue of. So, right. <laughs> yeah, man. And, 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 and I would say that like, you know, some of the illustrations are getting a little bit better. I can say that too. You know what I mean? Especially mm -hmm. like what representation that that's, that was the word that I was looking for representation, you know, us being in these anime films uh, yeah. soon, as I should say, film soon, because right now it's just on, on paperwork. You feel me? It, it's gotcha. easy to get on paper. But when we finally hit these films and stuff like that, that's when it can just blast off to a whole other thing. But the next thing I want to talk to you about is that, you know, uh, you know you're know, you into medicine, correct? Yeah. As I should say. Um, tell me your thought process as far as, like, you know, Black people being in medicine and how much we should know more about what's going into our bodies. Well, um, so let so let me, let me dive a little deeper into that. So, it's not actually actually medicine. Medicine, of course, definitely is very important. But what I actually do, <laughs> what I actually do is this: um, pretty much, uh, you know, ship and receive, you know, blood to to send to send to hospitals or whatever. So, uh, what I receive uh, for my job, uh, we send to meet the needs for the patients in the hospital. But in regards to medicine is very important because um it's it's i guess depending on from from what you eat to you know to what you drink to how you uh take care and manage your body and all the all these different things um it plays a major fact in you know how things come how things come about we, you know like for you know people i guess that you know, go to the hospital for surgery and, you know, complications and all these different things like that. So it does play, it does play a, a, a major fact in everything that we uh, intake within our body. So. Because mm -hmm. we, we definitely need to study a little bit more about what we're putting into our bodies because it's like we watch the news and then we believe the news so much or whatever the case may be. And then they'll yeah. say something like, oh, well, you know, um, this this type of meat is causing this to do this to your blood or something to your muscles. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like yeah. it it gets confusing at a certain point, but we always need people who can actually be like breaking it down and letting us know what's going on. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes research can even be confusing. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Because yeah. some people can have the, the slightest thing wrong with them. They go on Google immediately and then see like, tens of thousands of results and none of that shit has anything to do with exactly what's wrong with you, you know? Yeah. And, and like, you know, like every, everybody's different. Everybody has a different body type. Like, um, 
like recently, I haven't really shared it, but like recently I've been looking into um, the holistic diet, you know, because for me personally, I want to focus on having more energy um, throughout my day. So, mm -hmm. you know, even though I do a lot um, day in and day out, I want to be able to wake up and, you know, have more energy to get my day going, you know, so that when I wake up in the morning, I'm not tired. Um, you know, when I go to sleep, you know, I have a, a, a quite enough rest. You know, growing up, we've heard, we've heard over and over again, you know, make sure you get eight hours of sleep and, you know, so forth and so on. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I, I lately I've been doing like teas, um, trying out different teas uh, with lemon and just different things to just manage that energy so that um, my body gets the proper rest that it, you know, that it gets. And then, of course, for, for what, what works for, for me may not work for another person. So everybody's different. Everybody has a different body type. And so, you know, you want to be able to, you know, find out what works best for you, which, you know, goes through research and trial and error. And so. Got you. And, 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 um, because I know some, some black people who are like into different teas and stuff like that. Uh, but like, are there any like, herbs and stuff that you normally like would recommend or something like that like teas and stuff that you go to mm, so far because i'm still i'm still learning these things so so far the only thing i've been really using is sleepy time and then i use uh, of course the louisiana tea um but i you know i use lemon juice as well natural lemon juice um and that that gives me proper rest as well so okay yeah, because people need to people need to know these things. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because I see, uh, you know, a lot of people wake up and they're just froggy, bro. Like just, you know what I mean? And yeah. um, it's like, yeah, of course, you know, you think that you can get your sleep, but I didn't know that there were certain things that you can, you know, drink yeah. before you go to bed that'll actually help you out. So it's like little things like that was very helpful that we don't. Know. Now I will say this: with anything, stress is stress is such a big factor in um just in everyday life and health um with just with everything like you have to I, I feel for anybody they have to find a way to um learn how to manage stress you know uh which goes into mental health you know so if it if it means taking uh taking time out to write in a journal, you know, talking to someone, you know, even if it's on a daily basis or, you know, just having somebody, you know, to talk to, like, you cannot, you cannot stress day in and day out and keep it to yourself. Like, you have to be able and willing to be able to express to somebody so that they can help you understand, you know, what you're going through or, you know, help you figure out, you know, how to overcome situations or whatever the case may be. And so like stress is, is such a, a big factor in health. Very, very big factor. When we stress, when we depress, we overeat, you know, we don't get sleep, you know, for some, it might be too much drinking, you know, whatever the case may be. So stress is something that I feel that everybody um, has to manage. No matter where you at in the country, <laughs> yeah. or in the world, should I in the world should I say? Yeah, but that's the thing. Like you need a, you need a strong base too, and that's that's why I say it's like family is important. You know what I mean? And it's like a it's a lot of family members or like family people out there that that kind of takes the uh, you know they 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 love when it's a good time, whatever the case may be. But it's like you also need to be there when it's tough times, and sometimes yeah. the tough time can be like being yelled at and you don't understand why you're being yelled at but sometimes yeah. you have to be that person that takes that you know if if, you, if you're going to say you're helping a person you have to be able to take being cussed out at least once you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. because it may not be towards you it may be towards whatever they're upset about but you just so happen to be there that's that's the whole thing of being a shoulder to cry on you feel what i'm saying because so in other people, words in other words when they're being yelled at they're actually just expressing Mm -hmm. expressing themselves I guess to get out whatever they whatever <laughs> pretty much and it's like you as that person that's helping 
you are the canvas. You are that that, you know what I'm saying. The painter gotta hit that hit that canvas a couple times. You know what I'm saying, whether they frustrated mm -hmm. or not. But they gotta get that out. They gotta get that emotion out. You feel what I'm saying? And I feel like uh, there's a lot of people out there who who is that that family member that'll take it, but they don't understand that they are. You know what I mean? And for that, you know, you guys are appreciated. Just wanted to get that out. But the the next thing I wanted to say, because you kind of hit that on the money with, you know, stress or whatever the case. Um, what is what is some of the things that, you know, because, um, you know, we all are in the workplace, whatever the case may be, work the nine to five, day in and day out. Like, what's something that keeps you, you know, motivated, especially like right now, where it's just like, you know, essential workers are, are, are more needed than anything. But at the same time, these higher ups are sitting with their legs crossed and making more money. Um, I think for me, just being creative, um, helping help me me staying active, even if it's just helping people. Um, I think that really just uh, that really just makes makes everything I do worth. I guess living for, should I say, mm. you know, you got people that, you know, do it for themselves or whatever the case may be, but, um, you know, everybody needs help every now and then. So I think me just actually just staying active, um, helping those that need to be helped, you know, when they can't find nobody else. I think that, I think that for me, for me, that, that keeps me going. Um, but I will say this, um, music is, so I'm, I'm a big music person. Mm, okay. You know, like music is, mu music is my passion. Music is everything to me. Mm -hmm. Music keeps me, music keeps me together mentally. It keeps me going. It keeps me, you know, if I need to decompress, <laughs> I'm listening to music, you know, sure. when I'm getting, when I'm on my way to work, get my day started, music, you know, music is everything to me. So, you know, it, it gives people a, a option and a way to express themselves. Um, you know, so yeah. Mm. yeah. So it's, it's, it's the motivation of people, you know, needing help and you're and you know, and that's the thing. And it's like, it's, it's people who needs help and you love the fact that you can help people and the fact that you got music as well helping you push. You feel what I'm saying? So I feel yep. like I feel like when it comes down to, you know, music and health, it 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 goes into twine so much, you know what I mean? Because I hear that there's so many people in nursing homes, you know, who have dementia and, and, and all of this yep. uh, Alzheimer's and stuff like that. And it's just when they hear music, it takes them back to the time that they could remember. Yeah. Nothing nothing yeah. else can heal you like that but music. You know yeah. what I mean? So the question was to really see like, okay, what pushes you? But to know that music is what keep any engine going is, is perfect for me. That's that sounds wonderful. That sounds wonderful. Cause I mean we could talk about mental health, but when we go to actual like things that's that's causing people to forget or like, you know, lose their life or anything like that, or want to lose their life, music comes in and balance everything out. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. And I, you know, I've, like, I, I know people who, um, who, you know, work in nursing homes and different things like that. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, like you said, it goes back to, um, you know, you know, playing music or, you know, so forth. Uh, so much that it kind of gives them an opportunity to kind of reflect back to the days of when, I guess, when they were younger or something like that. So, mm -hmm. that's what's up. All right. So, like, okay, like, what, what, um, what was the thing that made you actually want to go into, uh, you know, the the medical field? Because that's still medical, you know, even though you deal with blood or whatever the case may be is still a, a medical team, but like you're still a part of that whole team. So, like, what what was that like, you know, when we were going through the pandemic, 
and everything like that. What was that like, you know, being a, uh, what, what were they called, a, an essential worker at that time? What was that like? Oh, gosh. Um, well, <laughs> so the opportunity was actually presented to me um, through Indeed, but I, I, I decided to apply for it because I wanted to be able to help people in a different area. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been in higher education for a long time and, you know, deciding to, I guess, take a career change. Um, I said, well, you know what, let me, let me, let me try out, let me try out this field and see, cause sometimes you just never know. Sometimes when, sometimes when you have reached your end point and you don't know what else to do, but you know, you still have more to give, right. you know, sometimes you don't know unless you try. So mm -hmm. actually reaching out and taking on that task gave me an opportunity to help people in the medical field. And it's actually something that I'm really, uh, that I really enjoy and very uh, passionate about. You know, you get to be able to have that feeling of feeling good because you saved somebody's life. You know, hospitals work in, work in day in and day out. Yeah. And then taking on the task, I recently, uh, maybe about uh, two months ago, recently take on an I took on an additional task of not just shipping it, shipping the blood to the hospitals, but actually, uh, actually taking it, taking it to the hospitals. Mm. You know, so that people that have emergencies, you know, these lives can, you know, be saved in a timely manner and stuff. So, yeah, it's and then during COVID, it was. It was very interesting because so many people weren't working, um, but we still had the opportunity to save lives, you know, where we could. So, right. sorry for the noise in the background. Oh, you good, you good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but that's that's it's, it's awesome to to continue to be motivated to do your thing because, like, I understand how overwhelming that it was where people could have just easily be like you know screw it there's too many people it's too much you know and it and it's very um it's something to me because it's like you know we live in a country where there's so many people who are just so damn selfish you know and it's dope that we get like this two percent of people in america who chose to just be like you know what screw it i hope as many people as i possibly can and that is that's wonderful to me you know what i mean um but yeah, I mean, like, I, I don't want to, you know, take up too much of your time, but uh, good, man. I, I really love the fact that, you know, you answered every question and um, it was it was perfect. So uh, I want to say thank you for even taking the time out to talk to me, you know, hop on the podcast. Um, but but yeah, man, um, my last question to you is what is your thought process on how mental health is moving? You know what I mean? As far as like a whole movement right now uh, for people to actually be okay to feel their feels. Like what's your thought process on that? I feel that, I feel that more opportunities are needed. I feel that more opportunities are needed because, and I, I say it, I say it for, for this reason, for the cases, for all the stuff that's going on in the world now, I feel somewhere in that, in that arena, Somebody wasn't there for that for 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 whatever uh, for the particular person, you know. Well, let me say it like this: a lot of times when you know when cases happen with these these uh, you know mass sh mass uh, shootings and stuff like that, mm -hmm. when I see when I see stuff like that, I think about the person, I think about their life growing up, mm -hmm. I think about you know whatever the struggles is that they got going on whatever the case may be right. and the question and and the, and the question i ask and the question i ask is was somebody really actually there for them or did they actually get the help that they you know that they that they needed or whatever the case may be so um so yeah for mental health i feel that in today's society it's very very important that more opportunities are presented 
so that everybody that needs help could get the help that they need. Absolutely. And and that's the thing, because it's like at this point we can't we can't call people weirdos because they don't know how to feel their feelings. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh yeah. instead of calling that kid in the back of the classroom weird, how about you go sit back there and talk to him? Yeah. You know, yeah. before he grows up to be yeah. the next shooter. So uh that's kind of you know that's pretty much where we can just end off because it's like at the end of the day that's the last thing that happened that's the best way to actually look at it as far as far as further you know sense because it's like of course it kind of looks bad for everybody to run towards you know the mental health aspect when there's a killer on the loose you feel what i'm saying i get it but at the same time we have to be realistic we could have nipped that in the bud earlier in his life you yeah feel me? and 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 that's the thing it's just like um I just really wish that, you know, we take kid problems, youth problems, a little bit more seriously. You feel me? Like, even though we're adults and we're dealing with bills and government and all this bull crap, this kid is dealing with stuff, you know what I'm saying, at the age of eight, nine, ten. You know what I'm saying? So start asking these kids questions. So Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so that's... Yeah, definitely find out out what what their thought process is. And instead of Instead of saying, you know, instead of looking at them and, and like you said, calling them weird, weirdos or whatever, you know, find out who they are as a person. Because sometimes they they may not know who they are as a person. They might they might feel that, you know, that they don't matter. And right. so, but, you know, once they once they realize that they matter and that somebody really cares about them, you know, then it goes it goes a long way. Yeah. You know, everything that somebody says, everything that somebody says, um, to a person at the end of the day you know when they're going home because you never know what a what a person's home situation is you know they could they can go they can go to school and you know be one way but when they go home it could be a totally different you know they don't know what you don't you never know what they're going home to so you know and and life is already stressful by itself you know especially adult life (laughs) but you know you know, actually sticking by their side and actually checking in on them. I got brothers that, you know, that check in on me and, you know, just make sure that I'm good. And it goes a long way. You know, yeah. I got, you know, my parents and everybody. So, you know, yeah, it's, it's very, very important that we actually not just look at the crowd and, and talk to the crowd, but we talk to those people, you know, that are on the side, you know, that feel that they're by themselves and stuff. So. Right. Because, you know, like, um, having people who are in your corner who will just check up on you for free. Ain't nothing better than that, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, man, thank you so much for hopping on, Cliff, man. I couldn't I couldn't appreciate you more for everything that you do, you know, as far as, you know, being with the health. Um, I can't even think of the word right now, but just, just being in that in that health category, I appreciate everything that you do. Uh, yeah, man, so I've been Cuzzo Smith. Peace and love. Thank you guys for tuning in to Uncle Bo TV. Peace. All right. Yep. Yes, sir. <laughs>